you'd pick me up on time when I told you. Uh, yes, sir, I was. Instead of way. driving in endless circles around the Justice Building. Well, there was a no stop. I would be fully dressed and ready for the theater instead of half dressed and late. Uh, yes, sir, my This apologies. is a consular vehicle with diplomatic plates. Nobody's going to haul you off to jail for double parking. Understood. Uh, here are your tickets. Put them in here. Do you always bring your wolf with you on assignments? Well, he's not feeling very well, so I, I didn't want to leave him alone. Uh, I mean, if he's bothering you... I don't dislike animals, Fraser. I've had pets. Really? Small ones. A dachshund. Ah. He died. Huh. Just don't get hair on my seats. There it is. Uh, yes, I see it. You need to stop. Well, that would appear to be prohibited. Stop anyway. Certainly. You're not stopping. No, sir, I'm not. <sighs> Spirit change. Spirit change. Spirit change. Nickel, dime, quarters. Spirit change. Anybody need spirit change? Spirit change? Anybody need spirit change? Nickel, dime, quarters, could you help me out? Spirit change? Spirit change? Spirit change? Where's Elliot? Nice car. It was a gift. Where's Elliot? He decided not to come. I think he's unhappy with you. Sorry to hear that. So is the senator. See, he really enjoyed your services. But you were paid once, and he sees no reason to pay you again. All right. If he would rather leave this to his press agent. I think we can come to some kind of accommodation. I'm so glad. There's a parking space right there. Sorry, and a gap. Oh, what about that one? Taxi stand. There's an alley right there. Yes, there is. Fraser. It's a fire lane, sir. You really need spirit change? Spirit <sighs> change? Steve. Constable. Parking. I'll wait. I'll take the cab. Yes, but it, it might rain. Suit yourself. What's the matter? You can't see the diagonal stripe lines? What, I have oh. to call a tow truck? No, no, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll move it. Be quick about it. Sorry. Keep it moving. Fraser. Watch where you're going. Hey! Hey! Somebody stop that little thief! She stole my brooch! Thief! Stop that kid! Hey! Stop! Hey! Fraser! 
pickpockets are everywhere. Would you mind? No, no problem. I'll drive around and meet you. I'm sorry. They're obviously much more familiar with the territory than... Sir! Sir! I waited in the lobby for 20 minutes and then I took my seat. I assume Miss Barkley had been delayed on business. It wasn't uncommon. Were you aware of any particular appointments Miss Barkley had scheduled last evening? No, I wasn't privy to that kind of information. But you did work for her. We were associates. And she provided you with clientele. They were associates. I think that's sufficient. Well, then, as the associates. What? The Mantoids, they're a, a green gemstone, a variety of anodite commonly known as green garnets. Lieutenant, is this an interrogation or a first date? I mean, I realize she has a set of great eyes, but... Do you mind? Apparently, the inspector's brooch was a gift and has some particular significance that makes it irreplaceable. So the I was book. Hoping... Ask about the uh, book, or would that be a relevant question? Have own case Shut up. Sir, you don't understand. Shut, Shut up. up! It's a very attractive book. Shut up! has been frank and open with her responses, detective. We understand that Miss Barkley had a book with names, addresses, and private phone Most numbers. people have an address book. This book is rather exclusive. A lot of names of clients who are somewhat publicity shy. Especially if it's the wrong kind of publicity. I'm afraid I wouldn't know about that. Oh, come on, look. We're not asking you to interview. Lieutenant, she knows all about the book. She used to be one of Sonny's girls. Most of the guys she spends her evenings with are all over People well, magazine. She does your detective not have a leash? Look, Lieutenant, you gotta give me this case. I spent six oh, years in advice. I know how to handle this, this sort of thing. God only knows what names are in that address book. This requires very special handling. Not your kind of special handling. Oh, and what's that supposed to mean? Well, I think, Ray, what the uh, commander is suggesting is that your methods tend to be a little, how would you put it? In your face? Exactly. Commander, have you met? The Mountie, <clears throat> Sherry O'Neill. Ben Fraser, pleased to meet you. I'm afraid I have a pressing appointment. If you need any more information, my attorney will give you his card. Oh. I see where this is going. 
Yeah, why don't we give this to the Duck Boys? They're perfect for the assignment. They don't ruffle anybody's feathers. Hey, uh, are those Chanel pumps? Yes. Stunning. They'll do fine. Yeah, so this is my mistake, huh? Instead of being out there solving crimes, I should have been attending charm school. Does he always whine like this? Well, I wouldn't use the word whine, but he does have a, occasionally a nasal cough. Yes, he does. Is that a sexist remark? Do I detect a little reverse discrimination? Commander O'Neill, do you have a suspect in the Barclay murder? No statements. Get him out of here. Get him too. Johnson, you happen to have an insignificant but time-consuming case in your back pocket? As a matter of fact, sir, yes. There's, there's a matter of a street urchin. Oh, perfect, perfect. Take Vecchio with you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Naga hide. Oh, it's leather. Smell it. Naga hide. Fifty bucks for the lot. Good. It's quality stuff. It's worth twice that much. Oh, take it or leave it. What about this? Some kind of computer. It's going to be worth at least a hundred bucks. Korean party favor. I got ten of them. Show her the brooch. Show her. Well, I thought maybe I could keep this one. No, we need the money. Well, it's mine. No, nothing's yours. Not until I say. Maybe I ought to listen to your sister. Somebody ask you? Look at you, Sydney. Look at your hands. Hard to pinch quality stuff, I would say, with those size mitts. I don't remember where your bread's buttered. You want the pin or not? Can't move it. Take it somewhere else. Thanks. Come on. Matt Nick's getting out. Who does the business in this family, huh? Who? It's just a stupid piece of jewelry. Boy, I don't ask you for much. I don't ask you for clothes or money or anything. Not that you give it to me even if I did. Get your jewelry when we can afford it. I want it! Look, fine, you can starve to death. How you doing, Sid? I don't have time for you today, Crowley. No, you better, otherwise they may have to invite you and your sister down to the office for an interview. Now, that would be an official interview. It cost us both time and money. Over here. Look, I gave you 500 bucks last week. That was last week. Well, I don't have it. Can you get it? No. Otherwise, I do have an obligation to turn your sister to a foster home. My sister's staying with me. Not if you can't afford it. Stay out of trouble now. Yeah, whatever. Today. I don't hear about this tall. Her mother's worried sick about her. This is a number I can be reached at. We get a lot of runaways in here. I'll ask around. Thank you. There's no way we're gonna find these kids. They're street smart, they live underground. We might as well be looking for a pennant winning Cubs team. I promised the inspector, right? You promised her? The same woman's been trying to get you fired for weeks? Does the word sap mean anything to you, Benny? Of course it does, Ray, it's from the Latin sapere. It is? Don't be a sap, Ray. You don't really know Latin. Bene scire, latinus literas, difficilimum est. Ah, you're making that up. You're babying yourself. You know that now. It's only going to make the situation worse. I'll leave Maloney sick. Ray, he is my wolf. I believe I know what's best for him. How would you know what's best for him? You haven't been sick a day in your life. I most certainly have. With what? Various childhood illnesses. Such as? The usual. Could you be a little more specific? Pink eye. Both of them. Swelled up like watermelons. Pink eye. All right, suit yourself. <laughs> yeah, my heart's bleeding for you. You know, I hear that pink eye can be fatal. In the north, most definitely. <laughs> You know, first impressions can be misleading, Ray. No, you just have to find the good in everyone, even if you have to manufacture it. Look at this. 
Ah. Somebody has a sweet tooth. Hmm. Did I ever tell you how much I hate it when you go, hmm? Hmm. Underground. Oh, no, no, I am not going underground. I'll be right back. Frazier! Frazier! Oh, why do I always let him do this to me? All right, all right, I'm coming, but remember, this is Chicago. If we crawl into this thing, we may never come out. No! Frazier, where are you? I'm here, Ray, just follow my voice. You see the kids? No. The brooch? No. Exactly, so let's just turn around. Ray. This is a swill pit. You brought me into a swill pit. No, it's not a swill pit, Ray. First of all, swill entails a more pungent odor, and a pit is generally a circular indentation with only one entrance from the top. This, however, fits the definition of a tunnel. A long, straight... Ow! Correction, a long, meandering tunnel. All right, call it what you want, but all I see is dirt and mold and... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're not gonna... Uh, don't put that I'm in... I'm just a... smelling it, Ray. Oh, there isn't enough to smell in here? You have to dredge something up from the sledge? A carrot. A what? It's a carrot. All right, great. It's a carrot. Just drop it. Mm, it's fresh, too. You ate it? Ray, calm down. I'm sure there's nothing in here that's any less sanitary than... Ooh, stay away from that, Ray. Out, that's it. Out, now, out. You know how many suits of mine you ruined? 24 perfect with good. Holy cow! Come on, man, let's get out of here! What is it with you? Does dirt not stick to you? What were you, Scotch guarded at birth? Hanky? This is genuine leather. Please, she's a thick buck. Where is it? You stole something from me, and I want it back. Stop right there! Take him. Sorry, I'm gonna have to ask you to come with me. You have my brooch? Well, uh, no, sir. I see. You brought me down here in the middle of my busy schedule, and you don't have my brooch. The police would like you to help identify a suspect who might have stolen it. But they don't have my brooch either. No. I thought I made it clear that you're not here to clean up America. This is their problem. Well, thank you. I appreciate you pointing that out. I'm not interested in retribution. I'm interested in results. Even a rudimentary understanding of dealing with criminals would indicate you have a better chance of locating the whereabouts of my brooch with a suspect free to be followed. Or am I mistaken, Constable? Uh, no, sir, you're quite right. Well, then, get going. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I'd crawl through a sore for her any day. So I cleaned out her apartment, got every book we could find. Fiction and nonfiction. We're looking for an appointment book with names and numbers of possible suspects. Not a good read, officer. How long have you been out of the academy? It's useless. Cut the kid loose. Ray, the man who assaulted her is the same man she stole from. Look, you spend your day picking other people's pockets, you're gonna tick somebody off. Well, that's hardly comfort to a 14-year-old now, is it? Well, what do you care so much about this kid for? All right. Please tell me this doesn't involve sub-zero temperatures or Inuit legend. No, it does not. Ah, of course it does. It always does. Ray, all right. Listen, when I was little, my grandparents took me on vacation to a clavic. What, for a little sun and sand? Well, hardly. It's a thriving urban center. Anyway, one day I... I wandered off alone when they were window shopping. There I was, all alone in the big city. The point is, Ray, that I became hungry, very hungry. And I knew no one. I, I had no money. I'm, I was desperate. So you ate all of them? 
Well, don't be ridiculous, Ray. I boiled my shoes, my, my oxfords, my left oxford to be exact. Boy, my grandmother ever tanned my hide for that one. Oh, that's a good one. So what's the point? The point is, Ray, that be young and alone is frightening. Without proper guidance, we will do things that are out of character. Look, they're petty thieves, you know. They uh, rob and assault people for nickels and dimes. Ray, will you at least just let me talk to them for a second? OK, OK. But you promise to leave me alone? I promise. OK, go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Excuse me. I have to talk to you. The man who accosted you. Who is this guy? Ben Fraser, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. He was the same man who chased you last night, was he not? Excuse me, are you here in some official capacity? My superior officer has lost something. A brooch. We don't have to listen to him, right? Your sister has been accosted twice by the same man in the last 24 hours. She's fine. Not if we hadn't been there. Look, I'm telling you, I can take care of her. I think you probably can under normal like circumstances. Like I said, uh, do we have to talk to him? No, you don't. Bye. Hey, excuse me. You forgot your sugar cubes. Thanks. What? What? Nothing. Nothing. This what you stole from that guy? Yeah, I guess so. Must be worth something. Yeah, it's just junk. You heard Celia. No, it's worth something. Maybe even a thousand. Well, then give it to the cop. <laughs> you heard the man. The, the guy's trying to kill me. Yeah, since when has a pig ever been straight with us? <sighs> Don't we have enough saved up already? Can't we just jet? No, we need more. We always need more. Look, we're going, OK? Don't I always do what I say? You want to go back to the foster home? I'm taking care of you. Andy? Andy! Meet me back at Celia's, you hear me? Listen, Buster, if you eat all your carrots, I've got sugar cubes for dessert for you. It's a very good choice. Plenty of carotene. What's that? It's a red or yellow crystalline pigment found in carrots, among other things. The body converts it into vitamin A. The orange stuff. <laughs> Have you ever ridden in one of these things? Sid says it's a waste of money. Sid's not paying. Excuse me. May I? I've uh, I've had some experience. Go ahead, but she only moves for me. Really? There. Come on up. <laughs> Deepen Baker. It's a wolf, huh? Uh, yes, his name is Diefenbaker. Looks pretty sick. Oh, it's just a plea for sympathy, I assure you. So it's just you and your brother, then? No, we've got family. They've got a big ranch with lots of horses. Um, we're just, you know, hanging out, making a few bucks until we can hook up with them again. You ever been to Wyoming? As a matter of fact, I have. I arrested a man in Wyoming. I'll let you know where we're going. I'm gonna have my own horse when I'm there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ride it every day. <laughs> That's why Sid Scott is working so hard. He's just trying to get us there. Well, I imagine you'll be leaving quite soon. Yeah, pretty soon, I guess. When, a week, a month? Uh, I don't know. It's a big trip. You must have been planning it for a long time. You must talk about it a lot. Yeah, we talk about it. Well, I, I talk about it. How long? What? How long have you been planning the trip? A few months, maybe. More like a year, actually. Ah. Look, we're going, OK? Sid always does what he says, always. Just that we got to go together like we promised. OK. Here, you want to try this? Just hold it nice and loose. There you go. 
That's it. Personally, I prefer Myrtle Beach to Martha's Vineyards. You? Tell me, is that blouse from the Gap? So, what do you want? Excuse me? Well, Sid says that people only do stuff for you when they want something, so what is it? Well, you know, the world's a big place. Sid's only seen a little part of it. Do you think that guy's gonna come after me again? I think that's very likely. He kept saying something about a book or something. Is that what you stole from him? Hey, I didn't say anything about stealing anything. No, that's right, you didn't. You wanna go run again? Well, it's kind of raining. Oh, yeah. I'll help you down. The killer has a very specific tattoo on the side of his neck. She says she pickpocketed something from him the night of the murder. Yes, so? Uh, she says she took some kind of device. I think they call it an electronic organizer. The book? Sonny's address book? Perhaps. There's something more, Ray. She said he tried to use a wire on her. I think it was a garroting wire. Well, I guess it was killed the same way. It was a, a small tattoo, the Stars and Stripes, located approximately four centimeters below the left ear. I remember it quite distinctly. And judging from the sharpness of the color, our man either avoided the sun or the tattoo was relatively new. Now, if we can just match up the style of the tattoo to the artisan. Frazier, a tattoo is a tattoo. It doesn't take a Michelangelo to do the old glory on somebody's no, neck. On the contrary, Ray, a tattoo is a very individual thing. You don't hand it over to just anybody. You have to have faith in the, in the vision and the integrity of the artist. The artist? Yes. You call this art? Well, very much so. And you know something? It's exactly that kind of assumption that has contributed to the commercialization of this ancient form in recent years. Excuse me. Uh, these subtle shadings, are they Zulu-influenced or Tanganyikan? Boyd. Ah. You don't get a lot of it in this business, that's why I'm remembering. Nuance. The man favoured subtlety. At first, I thought he was just another chrome knockoff. Had him figured for the dancing Statue of Liberty, the flag at Iwo Jima, John Bon Jovi. Are you sure you only want red and white? Oh, yes, just red and white, thank you. Then he did something unexpected. It was like he ordered a bottle of 1970 Chateau Margaux with his burrito. You mean the American flag on the back of his neck? Yeah, postage stamp size. You have to appreciate it. Hmm. Are you sure I've got a very nice uh, metallic puce? No, no, uh, red and white will be sufficient, thank you. And I believe you will find that the, the maple leaf actually has three points, unlike the oak, which you have, you have rendered quite, uh, quite accurately here. Problem? No, carry on. Do you know where we might be able to find this guy with all the nuance? Uh, no, just paid cash, then he left. Did he talk about his work? Mention a favorite restaurant or anything? Not the talkative type. He gave me this, though. As if I don't have enough of them. Johnstone. Senator Johnstone. Come on, let's go. Ah, well, perhaps next time. <clears throat> well, that's very nice. Is that the Tanganyikan influence?
Okay, so Sid, when are we gonna leave? Leave me alone. Sid, when? Well, in a month or two. Look at this. It's movie actors and football players. They got lots of money. So what? Some of their names are in this computer. <sighs> I knew it was worth something. How much do we have saved? Look, you don't worry about that. That's my business. You dip, I do the rest. What the hell are you doing? I'm looking at our money. Oh, Give it. Look, that money is mine, too. I must have left it at least 500 bucks last week. Now, where is it? You have expenses, all right? Andy! Don't you walk away from me. You spent our money, Sid. Look, I put food in your mouth and a roof over your head. You said it was all right to steal from other people. Look, you know how much it cost me to keep you out of that foster home? And you said it was all so we could go to Wyoming. There's nothing in Wyoming. It's just some stupid idea you got into your head. What are you talking about? Mama said we had a family out there. She said well, Mama lied! And you said you would take me there. You lied! Celebrities are no different than the next guy, Frazier. The only mistake you can make is treating them like they are. Still, Ray, there is the matter of etiquette. Are you saying that I don't have any etiquette? Etiquette is a loose codification of the rules of conduct in polite society, and I believe that precludes accusing a United States senator of murder, conspiracy, moral deviance. Frazier, this is America. We do that all the time. Excuse me, Senator Johnstone, please. We have dozens of campaign workers. We don't demand a psychiatric history before allowing them to stuff envelopes. This one. The woman he killed was Sonny Barkley. Maybe you've seen some of the press coverage? But ditch the slogan. This way, detective. That's quite an accusation. Well, who's accusing? I'd just like a word with the senator. Sounds to me like you want to start a smear campaign. Look. I got a dead madam, a missing address book, and a guy running around with a garroting wire who's a walking advertisement for Elliot Johnstone. I think that warrants a conversation with the man. You believe the senator, a well-known advocate of family values, knew Miss Barclay? It wouldn't be the first time a politician preached one thing and practiced another. You have proof of this? Look, all I'm asking for is five minutes of the man's time. Now, you can keep stonewalling me, and I'm going to start to get suspicious. Like, maybe the senator did know Sonny Barkley. Maybe they exchanged phone numbers, and maybe that phone number found its way into her little black book. So you are accusing him? All I'm saying is it's possible. Well, it's not. Oh, and you know this for sure. You know where he is and who he's with every minute of every day and every night? Yes, I do. And I thought you were his campaign manager. I am. I'm also his wife. What district did you say you were with? A waitress gave me your number. I have what you're looking for. Yeah. A book with names in it. Want to hear some? Be smart, kid. Take the book back to the alley where you stole it from me. I'll meet you there. I want a reward. 10000 If you don't pay, I take the book to the cops. The girl. She's your sister, isn't she? What? I thought so. She looks a lot like you. My sister? The alley. One hour. Bring the book. What about my sister? Oh, don't worry. I'll keep a close eye on
Now that takes real vision. Shaking down a United States senator. Honest to God, sir, all we did was ask Mrs. Johnstone a couple of questions. She completely overreacted. Oh, you think? You did accuse her husband of consorting with a world-famous prostitute. Suggested, sir. Never accused. Well, that makes a big difference. Harding? What were you thinking? Excuse me? You let this idiot question a United States senator? Can't we talk about this in private? I don't have time for that. I have to report to the mayor's office and explain to them why your detective lost his mind. Sir, we have compelling evidence tying one of the senator's men to the murder of Sonny Barkley. Oh, really? And what would that compelling evidence be? Well, that would be a, uh... You see, sir, it's sort of a small, uh... It's a tattoo, sir. That's what it is, sir. Johnstone has a tattoo? Well, an employee. His bodyguard, I believe. The guy with the tattoo murdered Sonny Barkler and stole her organizer, and we have a witness. Someone saw this guy kill Sonny? Well, not exactly. Our witness stole the organizer from the killer. A young pickpocket, sir. Oh, a credible witness. Well, she was later threatened by the tattooed man with the same type of weapon. So you proceeded to grill the senator's wife on the word of a thief? Well, not just the thief, sir. We also spoke with the tattoo artist, and he gave us this. Fraser, there are thousands of these things all over the city. I have one myself. I believe, sir, that you will find that all those other pins are labeled Johnstone 96. This one is from his earlier campaign in 1990, indicating that whoever wore it had to have a particular attachment to the senator to have kept it and be wearing it six years later. Your pickpocket. Can she ID the guy? Yes. She's here ready to make a statement? Well, she's not on the premises, sir. You have her stashed somewhere? Well, we don't actually have her in our actual possession. But you know where to find her. Oh, no, sir. We don't have the slightest idea. Oh, you are a piece of work, thank you. And you wonder why your career is going nowhere. Nope, you are so incompetent. You couldn't get to nowhere if I drew you a map. Detective Vecchio? I'm not through with him. Uh, Commander, the kid says it's urgent. Uh, what kid? Would you mind not interrupting me? Commander, this is still my unit. These are my detectives. Hey, if Detective Vecchio needs to be disciplined, I'll do it. What does he want? Something about an address book. Well, would you excuse us, please? He said he'd be here. He's gonna see us. He's gonna know I went to the cops. Relax, he doesn't think you're that smart. All units, report. Unit one's in place. Unit two. <laughs> Unit three. <laughs> Unit three, are you there? Unit three. Unit three, check. The suspect appears, let him get into position. Don't overreact, just wait for my command. That is, unless you... Your department. Thank you, sir. They're here.
That's it. Move it! I can't do that. I'll kill her. Now get out of the way. It won't do you any good. Just tell me how soon I can get him into court. You okay? I'm fine. I was thinking, maybe we should get out of this place. Sam, you just fell off a building. Thank you for the porch. She never wanted to steal. I made her. Uh, not to worry, I got a friend down at the state's attorney's office. Good luck. Your friend hates you, Rick. Ah, it's just a boy. She would like to see you incarcerated. Ah, so she likes handcuffs. I'm fine. Uh, <clears throat> I took the liberty of... Um, I found it on my desk this morning. <clears throat> uh, I hope it wasn't um, damaged. I know No, actually, uh, it's been like that for years. Thank you for finding it. And don't ever go into my office again without permission. That's my first and last warning. I will carry you away You know you have to leave here You wish that you could stay Support directions on this map But you're only going one way Do south That's the way I'm going 